Hey everyone, this is Untold Force, and I'm back in the VKB lab, uh, and today I'm going to go over virtual buttons and virtual controllers and all of the fun things with that. So to start, I just have a uh, regular Gladiator Evo um, plugged in. I'm just going to load that in VKB device config. You can see plenty of the other videos covering uh, this. So um, this is a fresh controller. I just uh, defaulted it and went through calibration. So we can see that if I click, for example, the trigger, that's button one. If I pull it all the way, that'll light up button one and two. And we can go to axes. We can take a look at, you know, standard things like this. So one of the biggest things about um, the limitation of game controllers is that you can only have eight axes visible. Um, that also comes with eight axes and up to four POVs and up to 128 buttons. Now, um, this uh, is not supported by all games. So many games, uh, especially older ones, might cut off at 32 buttons or 64 buttons. Or in the case of War Thunder, you can only have 256 buttons across all devices. So, um, <laughs> you know, go figure. Lots and lots of weird random rolls. And... It doesn't really make uh, any sense. So if you're trying to play older games <clears throat> with your, um, uh, not just your Gladiator, but any of your VKB gear, you may need to go and set up virtual controllers. Um, sorry, my cat just jumped on something and knocked it over. Anyway, um, to set up virtual controllers, we're going to go to the global tab at the bottom. And under this uh, common section, right here in the middle. So there's common and external. We're going to go to common. We see um, right next to the number of POV, we have the number of buttons and VC no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 32. Um, so some people might want to set uh, like a custom number of buttons. You might be tempted to say, I only need 50 buttons. Don't do that. Um, for just because of how game controllers are recognized, try to do them in either in multiples of 32. So either do 32, 64, or 128. So in this case, let's just set it to 32. And we we're, we're going to say that we're going to have one additional virtual controller. So I've set this and now I'm going to, or I've, uh, I've input those options and now I'm going to click set. So what set does is it writes um, all of this information to your joystick. Now, notice how at the top here we have Gladiator Evo and it says HID composite device and in brackets it says two. And if you mouse over it, it has that little uh, yellow window that says HID compliant game controller, HID compliant game controller. That tells you that um, it is properly set up to have two devices. And on the test tab, this is how we know that we have two devices. We have one device called VKB Sim Gladiator Evo R with eight axes, 32 buttons, and one POV. And if we click this in the drop down, we now see that there's another uh, VKB Sim Gladiator Evo R. This is a big limitation of virtual controllers. They have the same device name because uh, of reasons that I don't entirely understand. I think it's something to do with USB endpoints and stuff they are going to share the same device name. So for some programs like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, this is definitely not something you want to do because Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 cannot determine the difference between these two uh, virtual devices. So it just gets them all confused and it becomes a mess. So don't do that. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is fine. Go figure. Anyway, so let's go and check it out. Notice how we have all the axes are loaded on the first vir virtual controller. None of the axes are on the second virtual controller, but we do have four POVs on here. So if we go to the first virtual controller and we can just test some of the buttons, I'll squeeze the trigger so you can see one, two, there we go. That's great. Now, if I go to the second virtual controller, I squeeze the trigger, nothing. That's because we have different buttons set up for each. So if we have 32 buttons on our first virtual controller, um, then the buttons past uh, 32 
will automatically go to our second, uh, well, our second device, our first virtual device, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to control it, call it controller one and controller two. Um, so they're going to go to controller two. So let's start by figuring out, let's go to controller one. We can, uh, and what we can do too, is we can go to profile down here at the bottom. And then we can see on the logical layer, what's output to each, uh, like what button uh, number is going to be output to each. So uh, the physical layer describes the actual things on your, uh, on your controller. And then that's past the logical layer. And then that goes to the virtual layer, which we don't really see because that's what's doing all of the, um, the configure, that's what's talking to your computer. So the things we're most interested in are the physical layer, which is where we're gonna configure all of the physical buttons, encoders, um, all of these, all of the things that, that uh, matter here. And then we're gonna pass those to the logical layer. So since I've been playing around with the main trigger, what we're going to do is this, this is just a quick tutorial about how to move the main trigger button, which outputs to um, button number one right here. Uh, we're going to move that to button number one on the second device. Okay, so if we go again um, here on the first device, I click it, that's all, that's all good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move it from this first device and I'm going to move it to the second device, the second uh, or the virtual controller. So what we'll do here is we go back to the profile tab at the bottom. If you're curious about um, where your, uh, what the physical uh, cell of your button is, you can click pull and then just pull it. So in this case, if you look under the second row, second column. So right here where I'm, where my mouse is, that is the main trigger button. So physical cell 10. But if we go again to the logical layer, we now see that physical cell 10 is outputting to virtual button one. So that little one right here uh, means that that's where it's going. So let's move that. So I'm going to click this. And what that does is it brings up another window. And I'm going to change it. I'm going to double click in that button window to bring up the uh, logical layer. So uh, this is showing me all of the um, assignments. So if you remember, the first uh, up to button 32 is going to be on our first um, controller. So uh, I wanted to map button number one on the, the second controller to this, so, but I can't because we already have four buttons assigned to uh, to the second controller already. So only the green buttons are ones that are free. Red buttons are not free. So uh, just for the sake of argument, let's go and assign it to the first available button of the next register. You don't have to worry about that, but uh, in this case, I'm just going to put it to button 41. So now we see that this, uh, that my main trigger is going to output to button 41. I'm going to close that off and notice how now it's red because it says it exceeds the permitted HID button 32. So let's see what happens. All right. And now we'll go to test. Look at that. It's now button nine on the second controller, the virtual controller that we created. And if we go back to the original controller and I squeeze the trigger, nothing happens. But what happens if I squeeze the trigger all the way to activate both stages of the trigger? Well, there we go. We see button number two is illuminating, but button one is going to, what was button one is now gonna be button nine. So this is, um, this is a rather complicated way of going about things because um, unfortunately there's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of configuration that you might have to do. So instead of manually changing buttons around, 
just don't bother with that. Just go to global, set your set the number of buttons that your game supports. If your game only supports 32, set it to 32, and then set the number of virtual controllers you need. So if you have up to, to uh, 64 total buttons, um, then you only need one virtual controller. If your um, VKB setup, you might have a Stax Max that has, you know, the stem, the ATEM, and if you have all of the modules installed, you might have over 64 buttons. So you might need to add an additional virtual controller here. You might need to select two. Um, and again, if you don't have that many, then you don't need any virtual controllers. The most useful thing for virtual controllers, in my opinion, is not just the buttons, but it's the axes. Because some of the, um, some of the controllers, like let's take the uh, Gunfighter with the Modern Combat Grip Ultimate, that alone, with all the mini sticks installed, um, that combination can go up to nine axes. So you might have to spill over and create a virtual controller just for the extra axis. Um, another co really common setup is uh, the Gladiator base with um, the Space Combat Grip Premium, as well as a Throttle Quadrant, the THQ. If you use that, you're going to have nine axes available, or nine axes. Uh, so it will automatically default to creating a virtual controller for that extra axis. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight as to um, how virtual controllers work, because this is a pretty complex uh, setup. As I mentioned, this is a, a fairly in-depth portion of um, playing around with VKB device config, and I highly recommend you read the manual on the VKB uh, website. They have a link to the Enjoy32 controller manual, and it gives you all the information you need there. Well, much of the information. It's a, it's a pretty deep read though, so be ready for a deep dive. Anyway, this is Untold Force. I hope you had a great time. Hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment on this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.